You check room 208 and make sure that it's um, the floor, is, if there's nothing on there. Room 208? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Things have changed here at the shelter drastically over the past four months because of the first part happened with schools closing. So we had to look at, okay, now we're gonna have them in the shelter 24 hours a day versus the 16. My team here at the shelter, we, we put a plan in place. We started stockpiling supplies, food, sanitizing. We brought in a commercial cleaning company to clean our areas, just keeping our families and our staff safe. So it wasn't time for fear. It wasn't time for, oh, whoa, me. It was, okay, let's get in there and get it done. We gotta make it happen. When COVID hit, there were people that didn't have the opportunities to have the flexibility of working at home. So their livelihood stopped. They were one, two, maybe three paychecks away from being homeless themselves. If the government wouldn't have stepped in to say, you know what, we're gonna abate all evictions right now. How many of us would be homeless? How many of us would be trying to seek resources for other nonprofit organizations that provide housing for the unsheltered? When we look at it like that, it's not someone else's problem. It's not something I can just walk past when I'm walking down the street and just ignore. It's all of our problems because we're interconnected and that's what essential is. It's not a job. I worked a job for 20 years. This is what I'm called to do. So I tell people, in my life, I feel and I believe that if I lay my head down and I don't wake up and I go see my maker, will I hear well done? Did I do everything that I could do? And if I could say yes, I'm good.